general relativity step by step. Uh, I think I've got a sine error here. Uh, I think it should be a plus one. Yeah, so t equals plus or minus the square root of x squared plus one. I think that's right. Yeah, that should be a minus one. Anyway, uh, we've got these nice critical Schreckerhoff's coordinates here, and I want to show you what they uh, they look like. So I've got this uh, beautiful picture here, uh, where I've drawn them in terms of the two coordinate lines there, t and uh, sorry, no, x and t, which are like this, and we can see various features on this diagram. The first one is this line here corresponding to t equals minus x, I guess, which corresponds to the horizon, the, the, the event horizon. Ugh. General relativity, step by step. Uh, I think I made a sign error in my uh, previous one. It should be t squared minus 1 equals x. But it's easy to do because there's different conventions for the, uh, for the signature of the metric tensor. So t equals plus or minus the square root of x squared plus 1. That's what I should have said anyway. So we've got these nice critical coordinates, t and x. What do they look like? Well, well, let's just have a look at what they look like. This is what they look like. So what we see is a diagram here where we've got the two critical coordinates there, x on the horizontal axis and t on the vertical axis. And we see various features, which I'll go through one by one. The first one is this horizontal line, this, sorry, this 45 degree line here, this fuchsia line, I think it is. This corresponds to r equals 1, which is a rather peculiar way of expressing it, because r equals 1 you'd expect to be a vertical line, but we've had to distort that uh, view in order to make our ingoing null geodesics and our outgoing null geodesics cross at 40, uh, travel at 45 degrees. So they're going at 45 degrees left and right of the diagram here. Remember that this t is a time-like coordinate. What else have I put on this diagram? I've put quite a lot. I've put a few little light cones on here and there, dotted around, just showing you where light goes. Um, however, you can observe that the ingoing null geodesics just cruise straight along by through the event horizon, which is not an obvious feature. Well, it, it's what you want, but it's not. It's far from obvious mathematically that the that the ingoing null geodesics travel through the horizon unimpeded as they do in the picture here. When I was preparing this, I had a infelicity, not quite a bug, but an infelicity in my numerical integration rate, it, my numer numerical integration routines that basically meant that the uh, the lines behaved, the, the geodesics behaved very peculiarly near r equals 1. The other feature I've got here is this grey region here, which corresponds to r is less than 0. This black line here is the singularity, which is r equals 0. And you'll remember that the equation that we had for r equals 0 is that t squared equals x squared plus 1. So this is non -physical. r is less than 0 is non-physical. So this, li this line here corresponds to r equals 0, which is a non-obvious concept. It's a, very, it's a very tricky concept to explain. You expect r equals 0 to follow a time-like trajectory, but that's not the case. That's not the case. It's distorted space-time so much, it's actually a space-like coordinate, you see, because it's more or less horizontal. So ingoing null geodesics cross the um, event horizon, and it doesn't matter where they go. They all end up at the singularity, because they can only travel at 45 degrees. Now, if you have a look at the outward going uh, null geodesics, the outward null geodesics go this way, outwards there. But even if you're, it doesn't matter where you are inside the black hole, wherever you are, if you try to send an outward going ray, you'll eventually here hit the singularity. So that's what you mean when you say that not even light can escape from a black hole, because even outward going null geodesics hit r equals zero eventually. There's a couple of other features which I've shown, which I've shown on this diagram as well, in uh, uh, orange and, and, and green colours here. These are lines of equal Schwarzschild r. So lines of, of constant Schwarzschild r, this is r equals 1.05 here, 1.37, I forget what this value is here. But you can see that they're curved on this uh, diagram here, simply because of the rather uh, extreme transformations of space-time that we need 
to 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 represent space time in this um, coordinate system. But you'll notice something else peculiar as well. Inside the horizon, which is this region here, inside the horizon, lines of constant Schwarzschild radius. Look, I've got R equals 0 0.8, 0 0.95, and 0.6. These lines here are space-like, not time-like. Outside here, they're time-like. Lines of constant R, well, I can just follow that. I can just sit here in my spaceship at a constant radius outside the black hole. I can't do that here because it's a time-like coordinate. Now, my, I'm constrained to be within my um, light cone. Where, it doesn't matter where I am. I've got to be in my light cone wherever I am. So here, within my light cone, staying put at a, at a particular radius is, is not an option. Because I've got to stay within my light cone. Time goes forward for everyone. And time going forward here means that we, whatever we do, if we're inside our light cone here, we are crossing lines of increasingly small, of, of decreasing values of R. So inside the Schwarzschild radius, the lines of constant Schwarzschild R are space-like. Um, space-like curves, not time-like curves, as they are outside. The other point to make is that r equals zero, which is this here, r equals zero, uh, is a space-like trajectory. It's a space-like set of points. And if you're inside, it's unavoidable. You cannot avoid it, whatever you do, because light travels at 45 degrees. So even one that's here might take some time, but it gets to the, it gets to the singularity at r equals zero in a finite amount of proper time. So I want to talk about that, and I'll talk about that in the next screencast. I'll just stop there. And we'll just absorb this beautiful picture here. There's other features on it as well, but I'll talk about those in subsequent screencasts. Stop.